Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Reddit Pro Revenge. In this episode, you'll hear about a nightmare roommate found on Craigslist, and how one guy goes above and beyond just to get better food at a cafeteria in his school. I hope you stay for all the stories today, and subscribe for future videos. Living with random roommates found in an ad can be kinda sketchy sometimes. This story's titled, Craigslist Room for Rent Goes Sour. I was in the process of joining the military, simply waiting for the date to enter service. It would take at least a month, but no more than a year. My apartment lease had expired, and I was looking for some short-term housing. I was single, worked two part-time jobs, and had cash in savings. I'm quiet, flexible, simple needs, just needed the simplest of accommodations. I went to Craigslist. I met with a woman who advertised a room for rent. We'll call her Jill. Jill was 20-something, single, and came from a wealthy family who bought her this small three-bedroom house, gave her a nice car, paid her bills. Jill didn't like to work. She just, quote-unquote, sold her art. She made awful graphic art fanfiction on her PC, and probably never sold anything but was completely obsessed with her own work and would talk about it constantly. Jill had pets. So many pets. Like 20 cats, 4 dogs, a room full of birds out of their cages, and several aquariums. A bit weird and slightly skewed version of reality, but seemed nice. Had a room available and the price was okay. I could pay a flat rate for rent and utilities, provide my own food, and come and go as I pleased. Neither of us ever signed anything, just details via text and email. She benefited from my moving in, as I had transferred my cable internet connection to her house, got the modem hooked up, and used my own wireless router to let her use it for free. I also have carpentry experience, so I helped her repair some door frames and some wooden trim in addition to patching up some drywall. I helped her out a lot, all while requesting nothing in return. The first week was nice. Things fell apart rapidly after that. She became manipulative, started making financial demands, the electric bill was high, and I needed to pay my part. She had bought enough groceries for us both without informing me, but now that milk had soured and bread molded, I needed to pay for the wasted groceries. Old busted up doorknob on the side of the house broke off while taking out the trash, so I needed to buy a new one. Individually, these didn't bother me much, but there was a pattern. After just weeks, living expenses had tripled upon the agreed amount. I told her that this couldn't happen anymore. I would pay the agreed upon amount and buy my own food, period. This settled things for about a week. I got back from work. In my room, my guitar was gone, and in its place was a bill. A bill from a plumber who had installed a toilet. Apparently, my bathroom needed some work done. Jill had apparently lost all trust that I would fulfill the financial obligations after I had apparently freaked out about money before. My guitar was hostage, locked in her bedroom until I paid for her toilet upgrade. She literally added a padlock to her bedroom door. Time to get out. I told her that I was moving out the next day. A friend had already offered me his guest room. She could keep the guitar. It was a $100 pawn shop guitar, and I wasn't going to pay for her to fix her house anymore. Upon packing things came the modem discussion. She was taking an online class since she now had an internet connection. She would get her own connection in a few days. I was angry with her but not yet vengeful. I agreed to let her use it until my connection got transferred. A week later, called Jill the day before the cable transfer. She said she would drop off the equipment, oddly while I was at work. I texted a reminder and said, please don't forget to drop off the modem. And she responded, left it in a bag outside your front door. Weird, but whatever. I get home that night. No bag. No modem. I text. Did you leave it at the right house? I can't find it. She responds. Yes. Cable got installed. Still no modem. It'll cost me if I don't return the old one. Now I'm vengeful. She's extorted money. I've been nothing but helpful and considerate. She's stolen my things. Now she's probably lying and stealing more things, which will cost even more money. Jill took a pottery class on Thursdays, out of the house for two hours. Her front door had a combination keypad for entry instead of keys. She claimed that she would change the combo when I left, but probably didn't know how to do that. Waited until after the time she left. Drove past, 
no one home, parked a block away, walked to the front door, and entered the code. It still works. I went straight to her bedroom, not padlocked anymore. Look, there's my router and modem, right where they shouldn't be because they're in a bag outside of my friend's place. Weird. Grab my modem and router, grab my guitar, insert a spare old burned admin copy of Windows 98 into her CD-ROMs, boot the CD, set it to work, formatting her hard drive. She can complete the Windows 98 installation later. She complained about Vista anyway, probably won't be able to retrieve her art and homework. Back in my car within 5 minutes, at my friend's place 10 minutes later, Jill's pottery class still had another hour. I texted, finally found the modem, bag must have blown into the bushes, thanks for dropping it off, smiley face. I'd love to imagine whatever flurry of emotions she must have experienced at that moment. She called in a frantic rage 30 minutes later and said, you stole from me. What? Jill, what are you talking about? You broke into my house and you stole from me. Wait, someone broke into the house? I'm sorry, I don't know anything about that. What did they take? Her remarkable psychological gymnast skills. She walks right up to the ledge of almost admitting that she lied to me and stole my things, and then psychologically backflips away. Her story was not compatible with reality. All she could muster was rage and empty threats, and that phone call was the last time I ever heard from her. Honestly, at that point, the stuff and the money involved was worth less to me than the fact that she had so much rage but couldn't do anything about it. It brought me a little joy. The strangest part is that she never mentioned her computer at all. Edit. I feel the need to mention that I don't regret at all taking back what was mine, but destroying something that someone else loved, even someone I despised, doesn't feel totally great, even 10 years later. I don't recommend that sort of behavior. It's sort of funny to talk about now, but it put me through quite a lot of soul searching, and that one specific component of the story is something that I look back on with regret. How far would you go to have better cafeteria food? This story's titled, It's Not Just the Food That's Revolting. Back in my college days, I lived on campus and ate the 20 meals a week meal plan at the cafeteria. It was terrible, seriously. I know people complain about their college cafeteria all the time, but they still gain their freshman 15. I lost mine, the food was disgusting. Sunday spaghetti was made from a tomato sauce and Saturday's cheap hamburgers. One week, they didn't even bother ripping up the hamburgers. We were served watery, sauce-tinted, overcooked noodles, garnished with dry, leathery, two-day-old hamburger patties. It was still better than the other options. At first, they had a make-your-own pizza line, but removed it because everyone was using it and bread isn't cheap. I remember seeing a real salad bar in their Healthy Eats line and getting excited because it's hard to screw up salads, only to realize that it was literally floating in oil. The salad on the actual salad bar was not an option. It was changed out every morning, whether it needed it or not. Oh, I meant the ice in the salad bar, not the salad itself. A student wrote his initials in the tuna, and it remained for a solid week. Sometimes, the salad would grow its own salad. They had a big board set up for student complaints, and they would write responses back. Oddly enough, the board rarely had bad things to say. The manager, may he be haunted by a thousand bedbugs, confessed that he didn't have time to answer every complaint, but he did read every one and took the complaints into consideration. And, as far as we can tell, he threw away all the ones he didn't like. At one point, the board of trustees wanted to meet with a student. Only a handful of students, but I got my name on the list. The food was catered by the cafeteria. Basic sandwiches, if I recall. Still, the first step of any revenge is to make a big deal out of it, and boy did I. I exclaimed, Oh man, this sandwich has real lettuce on it. That's way better than what the cafeteria usually serves. And the meat doesn't even have a rind on it. The trustees laughed it off. Surely it wasn't that bad, right? I didn't even have to answer. The other student filled in the details, forcefully. For the rest of the meeting, it was supposed to be about general issues, but it became yell about the food situation. It was awesome. The administration, with the trustees yanking on their ear, had a talk with the cafeteria manager. And thus, Steak and Shrimp Night was born. It was touted as a really big deal, where they were going all out with super awesome food. 
Both the administration and the cafeteria promised great things. The students almost believed them, they made such a big deal out of it. The doors opened and someone was there handing out tickets. One ticket each, and you could use it to either get a steak or some shrimp. A leathery, overcooked, gristly, thin, tiny steak. Or six micro-sized overcooked popcorn shrimp. Students left to eat ramen in their dorms in droves. People were angry. Students flooded the comment box with so many comments, the top actually broke off from the interior pressure. And the next day, the comment board had a single note on it, thanking the staff for the delicious meal. Now, the organization that ran the cafeteria was run by corrupt, money-grubbing jerks. But they were based out of state and super cheap, so there was no way that we could touch them. Plus, a lot of the employees were actually really nice people. It was the manager and his ogre, er, I mean wife, that were the problem. There was no way to fix it until survey day, a few weeks before the end of the semester. Desperate for more than six entries total, the cafeteria was giving away a bike. Anyone who filled out a survey was entered for a chance to win. Not that anyone cared. The students had been ignored so long, they assumed the bike would be won by the manager, and having their name attached to the survey was extra super bad. I, however, hatched a plan. The poor lady handing out surveys was not allowed to do anything else that day. She was the survey lady. End of story. And was supposed to stay until the last survey was handed out. I offered to pass out some surveys, and she gladly accepted. I took a stack of surveys to the back table and filled out every single one of them. Name, phone number, filled out bad, zero, terrible, would not buy again. On to the next. Fun fact, on top of the survey, with my name, was designed to tear off. My name went into the bowl for the bike drawing, and the survey was submitted, suddenly anonymous. I filled a stack, returned them, then filled out another, and kept coming back until I filled out the very last survey she had. Revenge isn't for quitters. As I walked back to my dorm, my hand was sore, but my heart was light. And so began the falling dominoes. I didn't learn the full story until next semester, but as it turned out, the survey was the worst on record. Administration, who had been watching closely, noticed. Angry meetings were had, meetings that the cafeteria didn't cater. The health inspector was invited, and gleefully slapped some hefty fines on the parent company. It seems, by the end of the semester, the manager was collecting his last paycheck. His wife was fired too, probably because she was a troll. Seriously, I'm pretty sure she lived under a bridge and bullied goats. The university got a sweet new, please don't tell anyone deal. And oh man, the food. It tasted like food. Glorious day. Oh, and just to add insult to injury, I won the bike too. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed these stories today. If you want to submit your own stories, my Discord server is in the link below. Also, if you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss future stories. See you guys in the next one.